Hello everyone, welcome back to Krithis Studios and today's video is about a Grand Slam match between these three contestants Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240, Deep Cool AK620 and Noc2 NHD15 Chromax Black Now, we have already tested the Deep Cool AK620 and Noc2 NHD15 with a heat load of around 123 watts that we generated with our Ryzen 7 3700X Now, for this particular shootout, this opportunity came to us because of a friend of ours. He lent us his Ryzen 9 9950X for a few hours so that we could put these three coolers through their faces. We are going to divide the video in a few sections in which we are going to rate all the three of our coolers on the basis of their performance in that particular category. Now we are going to start with the looks. In the looks department, we have given five out of five to all the three coolers. First, because looks are a subjective matter. And second, all three of them are quite good looking. I mean, Noctu NSD 15 Chromax Black is all black, fits in all kinds of themes. Deep Cool AK620, it has a heatsink cover and that matrix fin design looks really cool. Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240. Now, generally, most of the AIOs come with those Acer Tech pumps and I am honestly not a big fan of those. So I really liked Arctic's in-house pump and its design and the addition of the VRM fan gives it that industrial look. Next up, we have packaging and accessories. We are going to start with Deep Cool AK620 and it gets four out of five. The reason for that, first of all, that scrawny Y cable, it could have been better. Second, uh, the manual could have been a bit more detailed, plus the labeling of the components, all the mounting kits could have been a bit better as well. It is good, it is really good, but not up to the mark when compared to the Noc2 NHD15, which is our next competitor, and it gets five out of five. Obviously, best box I've ever seen. Components, all the mounting kits are very well laid out. The cable quality is really nice, everything else. So it gets five out of five. Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240 gets four out of five. There's no included manual. They have went with the green and eco thing, saving paper and trees, which is a good thing, but still a basic manual would have been, would have made things a bit more easier. Although on the box, you get a QR scanning, which you can watch the video how to install the uh, cooler. Our next section is installation. Deep Cool AK620 gets four out of five, again, because of the slightly less detailed manual and slightly, very slightly inferior labeling of the components. Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240 is generally very easy to install, but there's one little problem. So there are two types of mounting for AM4. So there's the regular mounting and there's the offset mounting, which produces better cooling results, as they say. So this one gets four out of five. Noc2 NHD15, hands down, one of the easiest installations and one of the best manuals that we've ever seen. So easy five out of five for it in this department. Before I give out the performance numbers, I'm going to tell you about our methodology and the specifications that we went with. Now, all of this was installed on an open bench, Ryzen 9 5950X on an Eurus X570S Pro AX Revision 1.0 board. Two sticks of 8GB each, G-Skill Rip Jaws V 3600MHz, a consistent 128GB SATA SSD, no it is not that consistent, it's just the brand name is consistent. So this SSD we got because we wanted to separate our uh, you know personal use computer and the open bench and since the only component that we can use to divide, create a divide between these two setups was another SSD. So this 128 SATA SSD, 128 GB SATA SSD is what we use to install a fresh OS with the bare minimum of software needed and on which we run the test. Next up, we have the graphics card, MSI G48400 GS. Yes, they still live. And for, a, for some time now, we have also started to take the readings from the wall, the power consumption, and that was for another test altogether. And you'll see a video about that soon as well. But in order, to measure the power of the processor as accurately as possible, we have to keep the other components to the bare minimum and 8400GS 8, was the bare minimum that we could find. So that is why this is our graphics card. For our power supply, we have the Corsair RM750X. Now let me take you through the settings that we used for this particular test. 
Now Ryzen has a tendency to keep boosting if it has the temperature headroom. So if a cooler performs better than another, the temperatures may not be very far apart because again, it is going to keep boosting till it hits the temperature threshold. And that is why we went with the static overclock. 4.5 GHz all core at 1.212 volts core voltage set in BIOS. The load voltage is different, but again, that is off topic. The power consumption, now this is the important factor. We got the package power we got we in hardware info was around 210 watts. Now, before this, we had tested the Deepcool AK620 and the Noctua NHD15 with a heat load of 123 watts, which was perhaps the best our Ryzen 7 3700X was capable of in a safe overclock and not running Prime 95. But all three of these coolers claim a cooling capacity of over 200 watts. So that is why it was really important to put these to test and Deepcool AK620 especially, Deepcool codes a heat dissipation capacity of 260 watts. Spread, spread spectrum was switched off and AMD cool and quiet was also off. LHC was set to high and the CPU fans were set to 100% PWM. So CPU fan RPMs, 100% PWM. Deepcool AK620 sat at around 1870 to 1860 RPM. And as we tested in the review, the noise at this RPM is approximately 48 to 49 dBA on a noise floor of 36 dBA. Noctua NHD15 sat at 1425 RPM approximately and at this RPM, the noise on a 36 dBA floor for the Noctua was 43 to 44 dBA, which is an extremely good number. Now, for this test, we did not have the processor for long, so I was not able to log the noise numbers for the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240. But I can say that at a top speed of around 1700 RPM at 100% PWM, it was very quiet and it is a general guess that it is going to land in the ballpark of the Noctua NHD15 in terms of the noise it makes. At idle, the deep cool AK620 reported a delta T of 7.8 degrees Celsius. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240 reported a delta temperature of 7.1 degrees Celsius. And the Noctua NHD15 Chrome Max Black reported a delta temperature of 7.6 degrees Celsius. Under load, the Deepcool AK620 reported a delta temperature of 56.9 degrees Celsius over ambient. Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240, 54.6 degrees Celsius. Noctua NHD15 Chrome Max Black, 54.8 degrees Celsius. Now, just for fun, I also logged the maximum temperature that I saw on Hardware Info during the entirety of the test, 10 minutes of Cinebench R23. Deepcool AK620 reported a maximum delta T of 57.8 degrees Celsius. For the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240, it was 56.1 degrees Celsius. And for the Noctua NHD15 Chrome Max Black, it was 56.3 degrees Celsius. Another important aspect that I want to talk about here is because our system was, an, uh, was on an open bench, there was not enough airflow over the VRMs. Now in a case, even if you have an AIO that does not have a dedicated VRM fan like the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 does, the VRMs get ample airflow because of the case fans. But on an open bench, that is not the case. In case of air coolers, there is still a decent amount of airflow, even on an open bench for the VRMs. But in case of an AIO, like regular ones, ACTEC, they do not have a dedicated VRM fan and that is why VRM, fan, uh, VRM temperature is also important. The Deepcool AK620, 31.5 degrees Celsius. Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240 with its 40mm VRM fan, 33.5 degrees Celsius. Noctua NHD15 Pro Max Black, listen to this, 26.5 degrees Celsius. Now, let me take a little time to explain this to you. The Deepcool AK620 has 120mm fans that sit flush with the heatsink but there is still some airflow over the VRMs. And AIO does not have that option. That is why the uh, folks at Arctic added a VRM fan, 40mm fan. It is quiet and it does its job. So it's not just a gimmick. And that is why we saw the temperatures that we did. But the Noctua NSD15 Chrome Max Black, since the massive fans overhang the heatsink, there is a very good amount of airflow towards the VRMs 
and that is why the phenomenal VRM temperatures that we see with the Noctua NHD 15. Deep Cool AK620 gets 4 out of 5 and it's a very, very well deserved 4 out of 5 because it is in comparison with an AIO and a 140mm air cooler. So 4 out of 5, phenomenal. Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 gets a 5 out of 5 because it hands down had the best thermals. Noctua NSD15 Chromax Black, just to create a disparity between the results, it gets a 4.5 out of 5, although its temperatures nearly matched that of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2. For Deep Cool AK620, and this is not a meme or a joke or a, something of a trolling or anything, we gave it 6 out of 5, simply because of the fact that it costs around 5000 bucks in India. And for the kind of performance it brings to the table, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, ever since uh, you know, they announced the tie-up with the TPS technologies, the price has come down. Initially, it used to retail around 8999 which is 9000 And now, it can be had for approximately 7200 bucks on Amazon. And if you add, if you purchase it at the right time, you can get a few discounts as well. So I got it for around 6800 which for perhaps the best AIU in the world, best 240 AIU in the world, it's a steal. So in price, it gets a 5 out of 5. The Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black gets a 3.5 out of 5. Nearly 8.5 thousand for the Chromax Black version and approximately 7.5 to 8 thousand for the regular version. That is a lot of money. And especially after the tie up of Arctic and TPS, for TPS importing the Arctic products in India, their 280 AIOs come around that price point. If you have kept up with the scores that we gave to each cooler in all the sections, the total comes around 23 out of 25 for all three coolers. And this is not some political mind game that I've played with you. I actually, when I sat down to write this script, I actually gave them the scores with each department based on the experience that I've had with them. And frankly, I was also very surprised when it came out to 23 for all the coolers. So there's no diplomacy going here, going on here. So, but if all the three coolers have scored the same, which one do you go for? For this, I'd say it comes down to your budget and your preference. If you prefer a liquid cooler, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2240, for the price, that is a brilliant bloody deal. And if you get it, you won't regret it. Because even for high-end processors like the 5950X, it seems ample enough and a 4.5 GHz all-core overclock is a decent thing, 30,000 in Cinebench, and the cooler was able to handle it. So if a liquid cooler is what you're after, you can't go wrong with this one. If you're on a tight budget, Deep Cool AK620 for 5,000 bucks, this is just about the best thing that has happened to air coolers since the Noctua NHD15 and to some extent the U12A. So, you cannot go wrong with this one either and it is more than capable of cooling the high-end processors as well. The Noctua NHD15, well, it has been the king for a reason and it still is. The price may be a slight deterrent, but if you want to rest assured, if you just want to install your cooler and forget about it, then paying the extra premium is not a problem with you. So the Noctua NHD15 is a great choice. So again, it comes down to your preference and your budget. Now, this was the competition between these three great coolers. If you liked the video, like, share, subscribe. And for now, this is it. Bye.